Hi everyone. Welcome to our detailed exploration of the Vasa, the magnificent 17th century Swedish warship that has captivated historians and visitors alike for centuries. In this video, we'll answer some of the most frequently asked questions about the Vasa, uncovering fascinating insights into its construction, voyage, and the remarkable efforts to preserve this iconic piece of maritime history. Let's dive into the story of the Vasa and discover the secrets it holds. Why was the Vasa named Vasa? The name Vasa was a significant choice, deeply rooted in Swedish royal heritage. The sheaf of grain, or vase, was the heraldic symbol of the Swedish royal family during the reign of King Gustav II Adolf (1611–1632). This symbol had been associated with his lineage, as his grandfather, the renowned King Gustav Vasa, was a key figure in Swedish history, and his daughter, Queen Christina, later ascended the throne. The word Vasa itself translates to sheaf of grain in Old Swedish. This emblematic sheaf can be seen prominently displayed on the ship, both in the figurehead, nestled between the lion's paws, and on the stern within the Swedish coat of arms. The strategically placed sheaf of grain not only served as a symbol of power and lineage but also inspired the ship's name, much like how modern ships are named with their titles proudly displayed on their hulls. How much of the Vesu is authentic today? A remarkable 98% of the Vesa remains authentic to this day. The parts that were lost over time have been carefully replaced with lighter colored wood, making it easy to distinguish between the original and the restored sections. This meticulous restoration allows visitors to appreciate the ship's historical integrity while clearly identifying the work that has been done to preserve its legacy. Who built the Vesa? The Vasa was commissioned by King Gustavus Adolphus of Sweden between 1625 and 1626. Construction took about two years and was carried out at Skepsgarden, the shipyard now known as Blazer Holman, in Stockholm. The master shipbuilder, Henrik Hybertsen, hailed from Holland and had settled in Stockholm years earlier. His knowledge of both Dutch and Swedish proved invaluable, as the workforce at the shipyard included craftsmen from both countries. Around 300 workers were involved in the construction of the Vasa, performing a wide range of tasks from sawing oak logs and carving intricate sculptures to forging nails. The shipyard was a bustling hub of activity, with various skilled professionals contributing to the creation of this grand vessel. How much did the Vasa weigh in 1628? In 1628, the hull of the Vasa alone weighed approximately 600,000 kilograms. Upon departure, the ship's displacement was between 1,200,000 and 1,250,000 kilograms, which accounted for the ballast, equipment, provisions, and everything else on board at the time of sailing. Notably, the ship was not fully loaded with soldiers, who were supposed to board at Alves Nabon. Had they been on board, the ship's displacement would have increased by about 17,000 kilograms. Additionally, around 100 tons of provisions were to be loaded at Alves Nabon. Considering these factors, the total weight of the Vesa in battle-ready condition would have been closer to 1,300,000 to 1,350,000 kilograms. Where was the Vesa headed on its maiden voyage? The Vesa's maiden voyage had a few key destinations. Its first stop was Vaxum, one of the many islands in the Stockholm archipelago, where some of the guests on board were to be dropped off. The ship's final destination was the fleet's summer base at Alvesnaben, where it would await further orders for the ongoing war against Poland. The 300 soldiers who were to board the Vesa once the king, Gustavus Adolphus, gave the order to set sail for war, would have formed two-thirds of the ship's crew, playing a crucial role in its military mission. What was used as ballast on the Vesa? The Vesa carried 120 tons of stone ballast on board. Stone was the standard material for ballast during that era, remaining so until the latter part of the 18th century when iron began to be used. In the 17th century, it was not uncommon for old cannons or other metal objects to be repurposed as ballast, although stone remained the primary choice. 
Did the Vesa have a ship's boat? The Vesa was equipped with at least two, and possibly three, boats. The main boat, known as an Esping, was a flat-bottomed vessel with 16 oars and a sailing rig. Measuring 11.7 meters in length, 3.16 meters in width, and weighing around 3 tons when empty, this boat was essential for the ship's operations. Remarkably, the Esping itself has been preserved, along with most of its equipment, including the rigging. Inside this boat, a smaller clinker-built boat was carried, and remnants of a third, even smaller boat, resembling the Esping, were discovered near the stern. Where was the longboat kept during the voyage? It is believed that the Vesa's longboat was towed behind the ship, secured by a rope, following the Vesa as it made its way through the waters. Where can I find information about the decorations on the Vesa? For those interested in the intricate decorations and sculptures that adorn the Vesa, there are two excellent resources. The Vesa Museum published a book titled Vesa's Sculptures, A Story of Power, edited by Anna Maria Fussberg. It was released in Swedish in 2020 and in English in 2021 and is available for purchase through the Vesa Museum's shop. Additionally, Hans Soup's doctoral thesis, The Power and the Glory, The Sculptures of the Warship Vesa, 1986, is widely regarded as the most comprehensive English language source on the subject. Where can I find the transcript of the inquest into the sinking of the Vesa? The transcript of the inquest into the sinking of the Vesa, which spans eight pages, is available on the Vesa Museum's website, though it is only in Swedish. The site also provides access to the inquest of Captain Sofring, offering further insight into the events surrounding the ship's tragic maiden voyage. Why was the Vesa so well preserved when it was salvaged? The exceptional preservation of the Vesa after spending 333 years underwater can be attributed to several factors. The polluted and low oxygen waters of the Baltic Sea played a significant role, but the most critical factor was that the ship sank intact in brackish water. Unlike salt water, brackish water lacks ship worms, which are known to cause extensive damage to submerged wood. These creatures, which feed on wood in marine environments, were absent, allowing the Vesa to remain remarkably intact. While many shipwrecks have been found in Swedish waters, the Vesa is unique in that it sank whole, which is why today, an astonishing 98% of the original ship can still be seen by visitors at the Vesa Museum. What was the average height of the ship's crew? The male skeletons discovered on the Vesa indicate that the crew's heights ranged from 160 cm to 176 cm, with an average height of 165 to 166 cm. This information is based on osteological analysis conducted by Ebert Uring and published in the book De Dog Vesa in 1994. While the book is grounded in scientific research, some of the findings have been updated since its publication. How much did it cost to salvage the Vesa? The exact cost of salvaging the Vesa is difficult to determine, but remarkably, it cost the Swedish people very little. Most of the preparatory work, such as diving, digging tunnels under the ship, and rigging the lift, was performed by Navy and Coastal Artillery divers as part of their annual training, which was already included in the Navy's budget. The actual lifting was conducted by the Neptune Salvage Company at no charge, they were allowed to use the project in their advertising. While there were minor expenses for a few salaries and incidental purchases, the majority of the costs were never fully accounted for. Modern estimates suggest that raising a similar ship from a similar depth today would likely cost between 50 and 100 million euros, but the true cost remains uncertain until an attempt is made. What type of wood was used to build the Vesa? In the 17th century, oak was the primary material used in shipbuilding due to its strength and durability, making it ideal for constructing warships. The Vesa is predominantly built from oak, with the entire hull and many of the ship's sculptures made from this robust wood. Some sculptures are carved from linden wood, while the masts are made of vine. 
How can I access the database to view the recovered artifacts and information about them? You can explore a significant portion of our collection online through Digital Museum, where you can freely search among the artifacts. Information about the sculptures is available in English, and we are continuously working to make all artifact information accessible in English. Additionally, you can find more details on our artifacts through the Vesa Museum's website, particularly in the Find in Focus section. Are the masts on the museum building the same height as the Vesa's original masts? The three masts on the roof of the Vesa Museum are designed to symbolize the full height of the ship when its masts were intact. The main mast, the tallest of the three, stood about 52 meters high from the keel to the top. Were there any animals on board the Vesa? Yes, there were at least two live animals on the Vesa, a pair of cats likely brought on board to help control the rat population. Unfortunately, we know about them because they didn't survive, and some of their bones are now part of our collection. Both cats were young but already larger than typical house cats, more similar in size to Norwegian forest cats. We also discovered chicken bones, including skulls, which suggests there may have been live chickens on board, possibly kept for laying eggs. How many people died when the Vesa sank? On August 10, 1628, between 150 and 200 people were aboard the Vesa when it sank. Tragically, around 30 to 50 of them lost their lives. Many others survived because they were standing on deck when the ship began to keel over and were able to save themselves by jumping into the water. Fortunately, there were many boats nearby to assist those in the water, and the ship was close to shore, which aided in the rescue efforts. When was the Vesa salvaged? The Vesa was located by Anders Fronzen in 1956, near Beckoman in Stockholm. Diving operations at the wreck site began that same year. The historic moment when the Vesa finally broke the water's surface occurred on April 24, 1961, just a few minutes after 9 a.m., with the world watching. The salvage operation involved years of preparation, including digging tunnels under the ship to secure lifting cables. The ship was raised in 18 stages to shallower waters, primarily during 1958-59, which is also often considered part of the salvage process. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the history of the Vesa. We hope these answers have deepened your understanding and appreciation of this extraordinary ship. The Vesa remains a powerful symbol of Sweden's naval heritage and a testament to the craftsmanship of the time. If you have any more questions or wish to learn more, be sure to visit the Vesa Museum or explore further resources online. Until next time, keep exploring the wonders of history.